I'm just going to go through a very basic uh, run through of what, which characters and their what the relationship to each other. King Henry V is Hal from Henry IV, which we just heard. He's reformed and sober. He unites a previously disparate king kingdom. That's one of the main political things that he does in this play. Is uh, besides like a giant war details, he actually unites the kingdom, which has been bickering within itself for generations of kings so far. Um, Richard, Earl of Cambridge, Henry Lloyd Scroop, Lord Thomas Grey, those are conspirators against the king. They get executed after their plot is discovered. Um, Louis, or the Dauphin, I'll refer to him as the Dauphin, is the heir to the throne of France. He's the cousin of King Henry. He is not a fan of Henry. He never liked Henry. He's kind of a fool. Don't listen to him. You get that, you get the picture. Archbishop of Canterbury and the Bishop of Eli. These are the only representatives of the church in the play. They justify the war and urge Henry on, but it's really for their own foul purposes. You'll see that later. Duke of Exeter, foul purposes, I don't know. Duke of Exeter is the uncle of the king. He advises Harry to claim the French crown, um, and he acts as the ambassador to France for him. Um, he, he's awesome. I just love him. Falstaff, Bristol, and Bardolf and Nim. These are his. These are Prince Harry's former friends. Um, he has disowned Falstaff and all of them in the last play. Uh, they act as foils for his character and keep reminding us that of. Harry's past um, and help us to see how much that he has changed and, and what it is to be a man as opposed to whatever these men say that being a man is. Uh, Sir Thomas Erpingham, Captain Gower, Captain Flewell, and Captain Jamie, and Captain McMorris. These are officers in Henry's army. They're important because they represent the different uh, regions in England that were united under his rule. They were not I mean, like, they have their personal poems and whatever, but there isn't, uh, the, the fact that they're united is a really remarkable thing, because, um, you know, Scottish don't like the English, they like the French, blah, 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 all that jazz. Catherine is the royal princess. She is part of the, she gets married to Harry um, after the play is over, presumably, and um, part of the treaty. The Duke of York is the cousin of the king, and he dies nobly at Agincourt. Okay, Act One. The church is given a dubious space right in the beginning because the Bishop of Canterbury and the Bishop of Eli are, they take counsel together and decide to urge the king on to war in hopes that he won't pass a bill that would take a lot of their land and their money. It's a good distraction technique. War is a big thing. Henry was already thinking about doing the war, so it didn't take much. Um, the Dauphin sent, mocks him, and that only makes him angrier, and he's all the more for it. Act two, at East Cheap, Henry's old friends, we meet up with them. They're making ready for war, but they're also at the deathbed of Falstaff. Um, uh, they eventually go over to join the army. Richard, Earl of Cambridge, Lord Henry Scroop, and Sir Thomas Gray, the conspirators. They were paid by France to kill Henry at Southampton. Um, but there, Henry asks asks them if he should punish a drunk man who insulted him. Um, they say that he should never show mercy for such things. He takes their advice, gives them their sentences, and does not show them mercy for high treason. At the court of France, the king, the Dauphin, and the French nobles are met by Exeter, who formally declares that England is prepared to battle if they do not relinquish the French crown. Obviously, they are a little reluctant to do that. Act three. The English besiege Harfleur. This is where we hear the great speech, once more to the breach, dear friends, once more close up the wall with our English dead. Um, the French king and the nobles complain that the people are losing faith in them after Harful surrenders. They gather a huge army to crush the English and are planning to hold Henry for ransom. Um, Henry would never want to be held ransom. He declares that, he would, uh, that uh, it is his worst fear um, in private and he it's his worst insult in public. 30 seconds. Ah. Okay. The French are actually not unified in and of themselves. So we see this big uh, comparison between the British, who are usually in huge disunity, but also the French, who the nobles themselves cannot possibly get along. They, like, backstab the Dauphin. Uh, the constable is of a political party that's different from the other nobles. There's just a little bit of bickering that happens in every scene that they're within, and you see a good piece of that just before Agincourt. Okay, at Agincourt, no pen. And that is all.
the time we have. All right, good job. <clears throat>